What if your height wasn't completely fixed, even after puberty? Most people think once you're done growing, that's it. But peptides are shaking things up. Are they the secret to more inches or just overhyped science? Today, I'm breaking down how they actually work, which ones truly matter for height, and what's realistic depending on your growth plates. Stick around, because some of these compounds act in ways you probably wouldn't expect. Before we jump into peptides, let's rewind for a second. Your height comes from growth plates, soft cartilage zones at the ends of your long bones. Inside are tiny cells called chondrocytes. Think of them like bricklayers, stacking bone higher and higher. Growth hormone and IGF-1 are the signals that tell those bricklayers to keep building. Here's the catch. Once your growth plates fuse, usually after puberty, building new height gets much harder. That's why timing is everything. Peptides don't magically stretch your bones. They influence the growth hormone and IGF-1 system. Some keep levels steady, some create sharp spikes, and a few go straight to the growth plates themselves. Let's start with the heavy hitters, the ones acting closest to the growth plates. Human growth hormone has been the classic option for decades. Doctors use it in children to push the body into making more IGF-1, which speeds up growth if plates are open. For adults, though, it's less about height and more about muscle, fat loss, and stronger bones. IGF-1 LR3 is like the shortcut version. Instead of telling your pituitary gland to release growth hormone, it skips ahead and works right at the growth plates. It's powerful, but if it's misused, it can cause low blood sugar. Now let's move to the next group, the GH secretagogues. These are all about producing sharp pulses of growth hormone. Epimoralin creates clean GH spikes without messing with other hormones like cortisol. Studies show it speeds up bone growth and works especially well at night when your body repairs itself. Hexarelin is one of the strongest stimulators, with research showing it helped kids grow extra centimeters each year. It's a serious contender for height support during development. GHRP2 produces sharp bursts of growth hormone and has been linked to faster growth in children. GHRP6 works in a similar way, but with even stronger pulses. The catch is that it only works in bursts. You can't drip it constantly or it loses effect. MK677 is the odd one out. It's a pill, not an injection, which makes it super popular. It raises both GH and IGF-1. But the downside is that it can also raise estrogen. If your growth plates are still open, that might actually speed up their closure. Convenience versus risk. The last group is GHRH analogs, which keep growth hormone elevated for longer periods. CJC1295 keeps GH levels higher for days, even a week after a single dose. That's way more convenient than daily injections. But again, it only helps with height if your plates are still open. Tessamorlin was first designed for fat loss in HIV patients. It boosts IGF-1 significantly, and while it hasn't been tested directly for height, the way it works suggests it could support growth plates if they're still active. All of these peptides work by boosting growth hormone and IGF-1. They can only increase height if your growth plates are open. After they close, they still bring benefits like muscle, fat loss, and recovery. But extra inches of height aren't one of them. When you line them up, the differences stand out. CJC1295 and tesamorelin are about steady levels. Secretagogues like epimorelin and the GHRPS are about sharp spikes. MK677 is easy to take but tricky because of estrogen. And HGH and IGF-1 are the heavy hitters, closer to the growth plates, but also riskier. Now, what if your growth plates are already closed? That's where it gets harder, but not impossible. Some people look into the MBSD method, microfractures, banded sleeping, stretching, and decompression. It's not mainstream science, but it's an attempt to create small structural changes that might add height over time. Peptides can help with height, but only when plates are open. After that, they're better for performance, recovery, and staying lean. The earlier you start, the more potential you have. But no matter your age, knowing how each peptide works helps you make smarter choices. And now I want to hear from you. If you could grow taller, how many inches would you want to add? Drop it in the comments. I read every single one.